Mm, hello. Let's see. Where'd it go? Pop up. Show up. Come on. Yay, you did it. Okay, how y'all doing today? Uh, today we're going to take a look at the title card I made for hopefully an upcoming episode of the Rachel Big Head episode of Familiar Faces. Anyway, hey Condor. Hey Drake. Um, pff, hold on one second. I forgot my drawing glove. My... I had to order a new pen. The tip of mine... Uh, the plastic around the tip that keeps everything in place, it's starting to, like, crack and flake. And there's a big, like, almost... Yeah, I would describe it as, like, maybe, like, a tooth cavity. Like, that's the best way I can describe it. Like, you know, if you, an ink pen started to fall apart. Um, and it's only going to get worse and worse, so I had to end up ordering another pen. Uh, only 20 bucks, which is pricey for a pen, but you'd think would be... Way more for, like, one that belongs to a tablet. Um, and this one still kind of works. But, like I said, the plastic's just gonna wear out over time, so I immediately jumped on that. I'm doing pretty good. Is it Saturday? It is Saturday. Shit. Okay, that's good. Um, hold on one second, I gotta go get my drawing glove. This one, this, coming up with this title card was a booger, um, because I had to, I, I couldn't figure out for the life of me for a long time what, which I should make it into. I mean, uh, what would, should I just do a different style? Should I just, um, like, should I... I just, I couldn't figure out for the life of me, well, like, what, how to depict, sort of, uh, Rachel Bighead. And then I remembered, um, I forget what I was doing. I was actually doing something completely different, which is how inspiration works, I think. I was looking at a book of, um, oh, I know, I know, I was thinking, like, 90s, I was thinking 90s, so I was looking at this old, illu uh, illustrated, uh, Illustrator's Dictionary, um, volume like 12 or something. It's this book that I found in a Goodwill. It's for people who ha want to hire different illustrators. So they, they flip through this book and then certain artists either like buy a, a byline or they buy like a whole page to show off their artwork. Or they'll sometimes, uh, they'll show off like multiple pages of their stuff. It's kind of like the deviant art of of working class um commercial artists but like not free of course and it was published and then you would have it send out. There's lots of great stuff like weird commercial illustrations and again, this is like maybe the late 90s. So like a lot of um a lot of those zigzaggy illustrations, uh, a lot of uh, cut-out kind of things. Um, I was like, okay, there's got to be something in here. And then I saw a comic book artist, and that just made me immediately pop over to um, a a cover of uh, uh, that Nick Cardi did. Now Nick Cardi was this. Um, this illustrator, he was a comic book artist, he was also the, he did a bunch of cover art for, um, just about everything in the DC catalog, from Aquaman to Batman to, um, he did a lot of work with Teen Titans. He also illustrated it. And this is like the original Teen Titans. This is like the 1960s, 1970s versions of the characters. This wasn't quite the 80s where they included, uh, Raven and Starfire and Cyclops. So you had, um, but there was one issue where they did a redesign of Wonder Woman. 
and, uh, or Wonder Girl, pardon me. Not Donna Troy, but maybe the one before that. Um, and it's just a picture of her. It's just a picture of her old outfit, her old poster. And she is sort of, uh, jumping out of her, her old design, and she's just kind of displaying her new design, which is her hair is down. She's got kind of like a, 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 a bodysuit instead of just like the... It's basically she was dressed up as a Wonder Woman. Only her, her hair was in a ponytail. And this was like much different version of her. She also had like a really long like necklace or pendant. That was... You'll see it later on in this video. You'll see some references. So anyway, my mind immediately jumped to that. And was like, oh, that's perfect. Because uh, Rocco... Uh, works in a comic book store. At least he did. Um, that's like one of my favorite gags when they're when they're talking. They're they're looking at like all the things that have changed over the years, and comic books are literally three D printed. Which you know, comic books now are now online. You can get them on like your tablet. They're still physical medium, of course, but. I just thought that was hilarious how they supplanted the joke about, like, okay, well, technology has taken over this industry, but it's not in the way you think. Comic books are 3D printed, which doesn't make any kind of sense. Other than that they are still printed, but in a different way. I just think it's... I, it's, I think that joke works on so many levels, and it's uh, rather underrated. Anyway, you might have saw me, I just... I used a picture as a reference. This is basically just a height reference. If you want to get a character's height and dimensions right, like on on model, just go over and go over there, uh, like actually take a picture of them, or you know, open it up in a file, and draw over it. And then you can kind of uh, tweak it and twerk it and uh, on the on your new illustration and that way you've got a good representation of their height uh, no reason to not take advantage of the digital medium but yeah anyway I'm actually really happy with the way this turned out and I'm happy I didn't jump the gun and, and do something else that did that, that you know this was like one of the perfect things that, that could have happened because that way you can show that she was kind of not happy with herself at first, and then she got this this big old jump off. And then, uh, you know, Rocco's reading in the background. It worked out pretty darn good. Anyway, I'm going to open up some other stuff. Come on now, perfect, okay. And I'm setting up this other project while I talk to you guys. I'm becoming the master of multitasking. Okay, this is this is great. This is exactly what I needed. Yeah. Also, I got a new new toy. I got a, a Wi-Fi splitter out here for for the garage. That way I can split a signal from the office. I literally have I, I, you know, I think, like, uh, should I be doing this? Is this too much? And then I think back on, like, how Jim Henson, like, wired a TV to his head with a, uh, with a sweatband. And I think about how, uh, uh, Peter Jackson made his own, uh, steady cam for, like, 20 bucks when he couldn't afford, like, a real one. And I think, okay, this is what we're gonna find. I've got a Wi-Fi cable or an Ethernet cable reaching out from uh, from my window. It's connected to the router. It leads out the window, out into the garage, because it's actually a lot easier to... The garage door is right next to the window, and it would be easier than just running it through the house. And then I have the splitter out here, and I have the two things, and it's just here so that way... 
I can do this, and if anyone in the house needs to, you know, lie down or watch the TV loud, they can totally do that. Hey, Alter. I was playing, a, mm, rather, I was watching Melanie play, uh, oh, not Overwatch. It, it was the new Overwatch. It looked like an Overwatch stage in Fortnite, but I was watching, uh, basically, yeah. And, uh, someone shut the door because things were too loud. Ah, speaking of which. Hey. The long extension for it. Well, there's only... That's the two. All right. Okay, here you go. I'll lead you out there. I'll be right back, guys. Come back. Gotta keep on working. Hey, worms. Hey, Robbie. Would be an wait. So that would be another character on to have a British voice. Uh, I didn't expect you to. I ex. I don't expect you having to do immediately. Uh yeah. I mean that would be cool. Ooh, okay, anyway. Boo, 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 boo. Let me see what I was doing. I was in the middle of something. Where are we? Oh, yeah. Come on now. There's something weird about this one computer. My uh, PRPR Live. The stylus won't work on it. It won't open up and interact with the actual... But the mouse does. There we go, that's fine. Huh, just weird. Okay. Is he British? I thought he was Canadian. I thought, um... I thought the guy who voiced Dr. Robotnik was Canadian. Yeah, he was Canadian, I definitely. I read, I read his profile. Oh no, maybe he was British. I just assume he was Canadian because, you know, deke animation. Uh, let's see. 
main drawing. Okay, here we go. Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is perfect. Are we still working with... Yep, yep, that's great. Cool. East stream is missing. I don't need that. Beautiful. And then I'll just open up... Oh, it's over here. Never mind. Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm talking to myself. Okay. Yeah, he's a Brit he was a British blues singer, of all things. And he was really good, too. Like I said, if you want to hear uh, Dr. Robotnik just, like, really belt the blues. Let's see now. Uh, what was that now? He was close friends with John El uh, John Elton John. Pardon me, John Elton. <laughs> ah, I bet that's cool. Gotta go slow. Take it easy. the best part about working with the, o the OBS on the speed drawings that I do is now I'm working on another drawing while I talk to you guys about this drawing but it doesn't matter if I stop because I got OBS to I got a program to start and stop whenever I start and stop drawing or at least move the mouse I've done that a few times where I've I've like forgotten to turn that off and then all of a sudden, I'm like, it's like an hour, or like half an hour later, I've been sur surfing the web a little bit, and then I realize OBS is still on. I'm like, oh, crap. And then I gotta edit out what I've done. Or not use it. <laughs> Uh, cool. Um, Baldry unfortunately had did pass away. Um, in the two thousands, the stomach or no no he had a pneumonia. Well, damn. And talk about the balls on that guy. He had the he was openly gay throughout like British uh, in Britain. Like three years after they said, "Ah, screw it, we don't we don't really care anymore." It was on law that the, you know that uh, vilified that lifestyle. It is active. Cool. I want to change that though there we go i forgot he's moving uh oh, wait, wait 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 that's not right no time constraint i want it to be if mercer is not moving or at least Two seconds. There we go. I think that'll do it. Oh, I goofed up again. Okay, well. Uh, hey, CR, I was wondering about your opinion on the Dilbert comic strip since the video. Well, I mean, yeah. That, that was like, what, 15 years ago? Shit. A lot has changed since then, man. Um. 
His earlier stuff was still funny. Now here's the thing: I can't tell if it was if it was really funny or is because that that's what they had in the school library when I was, um, you know, running. Uh, I was kind of I was always there in the school library because I had like by the time I was in a senior, I had like hours and hours to kill between um, between classes. So sometimes I would just go to the library or hang out with some friends in the in the teachers lounge. Yeah, we got we literally just got to go hang out in the teachers lounge because at that point I was a teacher's assistant to so, a teacher's assistant to so many teachers that they were just like, "Eh, whatever." I shot I shot the shit with so many teachers that I uh that was actually kind of weird when I think about it in retrospect. Like, we talked about episodes of Family Guys and movies and, and stuff that, you know... But anyway, regardless, they had, uh, they had books and books about Dilbert. That was, like, almost the only comic strip they have. They didn't even have Calvin and Hobbes, now that I think about it. Which was weird. They had one. They had one Calvin and Hobbes books. Other than other than the Dilbert stuff, I would like read stuff about comics. Like they had a history of comic book. Um, in a history of comic books, they had uh, 666 horror movies. Which I would just... Like it was all black text, no pictures. So I would just sit there and just read through all the different horror movies and be like, Oh, okay, that's interesting. You know, just make up the movies in my head. Which, uh, I would later go on to see most of those movies. Or at least hear people talk about those movies. Because, you know, of review culture. And some of the movies in my head were a lot better. Let's see, what do I want to do? I don't, I want to get this out done out of the way. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Um, uh, opinions changed. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the, uh, basically they're just kind of like Garfield, except for like, a, a sad guy who's got to whine about everything. Like, at least Davis is just, like... He, he, you can tell he kind of has fun with it at this point. It's something to do. And there was a run recently, I don't know how far back it was, but there was a recent run where I think uh, uh, the veterinarian uh, moved in with John. And it was a kind of a breath of fresh air, because then you got this sort of... Uh, you had... Um, Garfield wasn't the only sort of cynic that was around. She would, like, make little quips about John and what he was doing, but at the same time, she was also more open to John's, like, uh, goofiness. So it was actually a really good balance, I think. I wonder if they're still doing that. Let's see now. That is wrong. That doesn't look right. Let's take care of that. Uh, BTW, um, before you mentioned the Animaniacs comic giving Hello Nurse a secret identity, I thought both she and Ralph were tunes created to aid everyday needs. Hence why Ralph never aged. Maybe, yeah, okay. That's good. Oh, oh, Pearls Before Swine is fantastic. Um, and you know what, to be perfectly honest, that list is so old. Um... I, if I could revise it, I think I would take that out, and I would put... 
Actually, you know what? It's been so long. It's been such a long time since I've actually done uh, done and up uh, looked at comic strips. They're mainly like web comics now. Do you guys know Nerd and Jock? That's a pretty good one. And uh, oh, what's the one with the blue-haired girl and the blonde girl with glasses? They are a couple. The, they play video games and it's kind of a, a kind of a little bit of a raunchy sort of messy comic let's see do, 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 do. anyway again that's more of a web comic that has arisen. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, we're focusing, focusing on, uh, certain part of this. Yep, yeah, perfect. Perfect. So this is how they're drawing I'm doing. Uh, the reason I brought up was because of who censored Roger Rabbit while where crossing over has tunes become real people. Oh, like in Cool World. Okay. Interesting. Well, that's probably why that probably makes the um, the ending with the uh, with the judge make a little bit more sense, right? Not just any tune. I'll do a hybrid of this. Okay, hold on. Got to get back to you guys. Uh, speaking of which, speaking of Batchkey, I got to see Coonskin for the first time this week. Isn't it wild? It's a little wild, isn't it? Um, I wouldn't say that I, uh, I, I would say my favorite movie. I'm not really big on his whole Street Preacher movies. Um, if I had to choose a favorite of mine of that particular genre, I would go with, uh, maybe, um, Fritz the Cat. But that was also written by Crumb, so it didn't really have that much to do with... I mean, it, it, uh, Bashki adapted it, but he didn't, like, write it. And I'm not sure how much he, how much he was involved with uh, the Nine Lives of, uh, of Fritz the Cat, which was sort of a real kind of, I guess, disappointment to a bunch of people. I don't know who was involved with that one, either. Uh, I'm gonna go with this color. Speaking of Briar Rabbit, I saw Song of the South. I think the movie was more anti-racism. I think the movie was more anti-racism than the others than others would think. Yeah, yeah. I, it's more, mostly just boring. Ralph had no involvement with the Nine Lives. Okay, so that was just probably the studio 
just uh, handing it off to a different... I was going to say, there. I've seen lots of videos on Ralph Bashke and Crumb, and they both sort of just kind of gloss over. Like, if, if it's Crumb, that's just glossed over. I think he mentioned, like, one thing about, like, oh, well, they made a sequel. I wasn't, like, around. And then Bashke, they don't mention that at all. Because I guess he had nothing to do with it. Let's see. Ralph had no involvement. Robbie honestly saw the south. The I'm in kind of a bad mood. I screwed up really hard today. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. What's going down? I mean, if you want to share, you can blow up some steam here. We've all been there. I had I was in a bad mood earlier today, but I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go keep my chin up and and do keep at it. Let's see. I busted my finger up today. I found, uh, I went, I did go over and do, do my chore run over at, at mom's, like I always do. I went downtown and helped her with a bunch of stuff. Helped her move some, uh, stepping stones and bricks. We're getting ready for, to have my brother over for Easter. My mother, my brother back from the Navy for Easter. So she's hyped about that. And then we went around, did our... We had lunch, went shopping. Uh, I found two really cool pieces of uh, of equipment. Oh, but here, let's see. Uh, oh, pardon me. Mom went out to the store, and I was at home playing some Jackbox and Discord. I told my mom I had a phone ready in case she needed something. Oh. Okay. Well, then anyway, I'll pick up my story. Um... I found some... I found, a, like, one of those... Well, what can I even start? How can I even describe it? It's something that slides... On, it's an arm that holds up your keyboard or your drawing tablet. And it slides under your, your desk. So I got that. And I've always wanted one of those. And it was like six bucks. So I was like, hey, shit, if it doesn't even work... Um... Uh, I could still, you know, figure out something to do with it. And then I found a, a monitor stand with its two uh, arms. And that's perfect because I use those to hold the cameras down whenever I'm, I'm filming stuff. Okay, so I get what you're saying, Matt. You, your mom needed you at some point, but the, the phone was off. So... Did, did anything real bad happen? I hope not.
I like that. Okay. Um. So she was at Walmart, needed to call me about something, and uh, and something I added to the grocery list. Okay, so it's one of those things. Yeah, my phone died a couple days ago. Dimensioner. I imagine that the not loved characters have a support group called Nobody Loves Me Anymore. Briar Rabbit, Pepe Le Pew, Porygon. What happened to MCU She Hulk? Aunt Jemima. Uh, oof, wow. That's... that's not right. Is it? I've only been streaming for about 30 minutes. Oh no! Oh no, I had it on mix! Oh, I had it on random. So we've been jumping from place to place in the... in the... In my footage. Oh no, let's see. 30 minutes, so we should be. Because I opened the music, the the music uh, playlist is on random and mix. And then this one is on random and mix too, but I was like, that's not right. That's way too early for the, for the thing. Oh, Lord. Okay. I think... Maybe that's a little... Yeah, here, this is a good place, place to start off. We're gonna work from here. Okay, wow. Oops. Oops, goof him up. Oh, well. Yeah, I mean, I assume because of the series, and I assume mo mostly that's just because, well, first of all, there's just a group of weirdos online who, uh, we, we, we know who they are, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, but also because of just, like, the burnout from, from streaming and, uh, you know, uh, digital media. You can only have so many, uh... You can only have so many new series. God, I'm just reminded about how Civil War ruined everything. And then they made a sequel to it. Like they need to bring back Tony Stark, but they need to bring him back into another, like, the, an average Marvel Universe. Where he's just, like, because the MCU is a particularly special. Because, uh, Iron Man, he's kind of a butthole. But he's still kind of respectable in a certain way. Uh, in the comics, he, he, I don't know, I just don't like Iron Man. I just, I, I just didn't, I just know, I just don't like him. The history of the character, the... I don't like him, I don't like the Illuminati, I don't, you know... That's one of the reasons why I was like, Oh, another Doctor Strange movie, this is gonna be... Oh, wait, they're there. They are there.
like Iron Man is like like responsible for like 30% of the problems in the DC universe. Pardon me, not DC, Marvel universe, duh. Like he literally just spent years manufacturing all the weapons. And then, of course, he becomes remorseful in the movies, but in the comic books, it's kind of just like, eh. And then he always ends up becoming a, a bigger supervillain than the one he replaces. It was like they made a big deal about Iron Man turning evil in one comic book event, and I was like, the one with the white suit, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's just like that thing that always happens. It happened in the 80s when he was fighting, he was in the future and fighting against Spider-Man. It was, uh, it happened in the 70s and... Like, Stan Lee literally took the bet of, like, making an, an, a, the most obnoxious superhero that people would still like. If people don't like, I don't feel like people don't like him. I think they people like the suit. Like the best thing the Venture Brothers ever did was like turn their Mr. Fantastic into like an a villain. And I mean, not even like before season uh, six or whatever it was. Just like the whole time being just like a really irredeemable butthole. Oh, uh, let's see. Let me check up on the. Oh, let me check up on the chat. Way better in the CW. Of Civil War 2. MCU fans didn't read comics because there's too complicated. Uh, you know what? I think... I don't know. I, I was... I, I, at the time, again, this was in college. I was getting into comics and then MCU... The, the thing is... MC, uh, uh, Civil War um, interrupted two comic book series that I was really interested in, which was, again, the New Warriors run, the one with, um, the one with Scotty Young, or Scooty Young, working on, and, uh, actually, no, no, Power Pack was pretty much left untouched, but they didn't have the original writers working on it, so, like, the, 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 the writing quality, like, really dipped. Um, so, by that time, I moved on to, like, like Dark Horse stuff, and just kind of, you know. Yeah, sometimes you just get a writer, and they just, like, ugh. Yeah, Power Pack is its own universe, but at the same time, like, they have crossovers with... with everybody. Uh... And back in the 80s, they they were pretty... It, it was pretty, you know, it, it was its own good run. They tackled a lot of, like, complicated issues. I'm sorry, Ghost Spider Gwen? That sounds awesome.
I don't know what you, any of you guys are talking about. That sounds weird. Okay, just, just hold on. Okay, here. Sorry, I'm drawing something else and getting a little bit. Gorgeous. Okay. Hello, my Amelie. No. Ugh. Was chatting about Doctor Who for a bit. Oh, hey, uh, Jerf. Oh, I tell you what I need. I need some water or I need some coffee. Ugh. I'm doing pretty good. Just uh, getting some things done. Decided to stream a little bit. And, uh, yeah. Just just stream, get something get something done. Uh people have been uh my channel is getting a little bit of a resurgence because uh people are watching the the Noid video. And they're uh they're looking at up the Noid now because of uh Pizza Tower. Which is pretty fun. I don't know if I want to actually play Pizza Tower. Um, it looks like a kind of... I don't know, it just it looks way too frenetic for my taste, don't you think? Like you're running around, it looks like you gotta memorize where the thing is and... And I also don't like the how it says, like, you get a C grade or a B grade or whatever. I mean, I get it. I get it. And the idea is to play it over and over again until you until you master it. But, ugh, I don't know. At least that's what it looks like to me. I'm, I'm going to have to eventually check it out. I would rather, if I had to, like, edge my bets, I would get Hi-Fi Rush before I would get a uh, pizza tower. Not a slight about either either one, or not a slight to pizza tower, it's just that, you know, 30 bucks and 20 bucks, the, you know. It's a Wario-like, hmm. It's Super Meat Boy and Ren and Stimpy Arts. Okay. Okay, Super Meat Boy, huh? Yeah, again, I like Super Meat Boy, but I didn't get, like, super into it. Because I was like, ah, well, this is hard. And then I'm like, well, I'll get back to it. And then I never touched it. And also, people seem to like these, uh, these art casts. They seem to be hanging out for that, too. Just... 
also, I can't hang out a lot today, or I can't get anything else done after this, because I'm going to be making some beef stroganoff, and I've got to look up the recipe and make sure I, I go over it again and again and again so I don't screw it up. I haven't made... I've only used the hamburger helper version, and uh, Grandma's just looking for something... Something else to eat. She's getting, she's getting in a rut, and she's just like, "What? What? What is there? We've got hamburger. What can you make?" And then I said beef stroganoff, and I said hamburger helper, and she says, "No, but can you make the regular version?" I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll give it a shot." So I got mushrooms and Worcestershire sauce and, and sour cream. So wish me luck tonight. I get really nervous whenever I have to start a new recipe. That I don't know by heart. I made clam chowder one time and it turned out not horrible. It was edible, but like, like not anything like what she or I was expecting. Is it fancy? We're just going to use hamburger. We're not going to use every recipe I look up. Uh, um, every recipe I look up says, yeah, use, use beef and use steak, and I'm just going to use hamburger like the hamburger helper calls for. Also, uh, Campbell's cream of mushroom soup. It should turn out okay. If I could, I would actually film myself cooking. I would... I would jobify... I know that's horrible to say. But, like... I would honestly try to jobify everything I do, because I'd like to get out of, uh, you know, like to get to the point where I can actually support myself on my own. I mean, right now, I mean, ever since the, the heart attack and my, my dad dying and all that stuff, and like that, that not the thing, the, the heart attack that killed my dad is not the heart attack I'm talking about. That's how, that's how much crap I've been through. But it's just like, eh, we're doing okay. But I couldn't, like, make house payments with what I'm doing currently. I could maybe move out back into an apartment, but, you know, just want to grow the business. Okay, 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 this is looking great. I am really happy with the way that this title card turned out. Like, really. Uh, again, I said I said I didn't quite know what, what I was going to do, and it's just, like, that whole Wonder Girl motif is just... Rachel Bighead is originally Ralph Bighead, who was in the uh, Rocco's Modern Life cartoon show, and then she came out as uh, trans in the new uh, the in the animated special that aired on Netflix, Static Cling. Before watching the Rocco's Modern Life, I did not remember this character at all from her original form. Oh, I remember, I remember her as as Ralph. Uh, those were some of the best episodes. I'm gonna have to actually, yeah, that makes me, that makes me more excited to do an episode about her. Or them. Uh, because those were some of the, that, that's, uh, there's one episode where they have to, uh, 
big head and uh, they have to reconnect and then the studio wants another series out of her so she has to go and um, she tries to sabotage that by hiring Rocco and Heifer. Wacky Deli. You don't remember the Wacky Deli episode? Jerf. Uh, I haven't finished talking about the Velma side eye review. I, I've got like a bunch of it left and then I've got the last two episodes that I, I stopped because I thought those were the end. That's the problem with ending every freaking episode on a cliffhanger. Is because you don't know. Even the series finale ended on a cliffhanger. You don't know when the hell it ends. Uh, Murray, um, it, he said it was more of a tribute to people that ever since, ever since the original series, like he's had, um, an LGB crew working on the show. That's what the episode clowning around was originally about, you know, uh, Ed coming out, coming out as a clown to his family. You know, he goes into the bathroom stall and does a clown act. And then his boss, which is like the most humanized his boss has ever been. I'm kind of actually sad they made him like the quote-unquote villain of the, the special. Because the most humanized his boss ever was, was when he said, after he, he, he hears Ed go, I'm a clown, I'm a clown, I'm a clown. And then you hear the toilet flush, and then he just walks out and he says, Ed, I'd like to see you in my office, please. And, uh... And then Ed, like, gets, like really scared. He goes to the office, and then the boss is just sitting there. He's like, yoo -hoo! And he, he throws a pie, and he's got he's a clown, and, you know. And then Ed is like, oh, sir, you, you, you're, a, you're a clown? Yes, I sure am, big head. I should have known there was something funny about you. And then he even says, like, he even, like, says, you, you mean you haven't, like, so what's your deal? Do you like birthday parties, bar mitzvahs? And, and then Ed's just terrified at the idea of even clowning in front of people. And he says, uh, you know, no, no, you should totally do that. So he kind of Sherpas um, Ed into embracing that part of him. And that was a huge metaphor. Like, the people that got mad at Rocco's Modern Life for, like, debuting Rachel... And then getting mad, saying, oh, another cartoon got woke. It's like, what have you been watching? What do you think happened in the original shit series? Anyway, but that was more of like a tribute to his staff that was working on the, uh, that was working on the show at the time. Chuckles, it's doo doo here. I've got a friend that needs. Uh, oh, who's that voice actor? Who's the voice actor that does that? He's amazing. I forget his name. I know it. I know it. But like, I just I've just misplaced it right now. Oh, hey, Stuart Wood. How you doing? Anyway, this is an art cast. I talk about some artwork that I do uh, for title cards for other videos that'll be popping up soon. Charlie Adder, of course, of course. Here, I'm going to open up a soda, like a bottle of soda. Sometimes my brain runs away with me, and I can't think, like, uh... Like, I was just thinking about, like, uh... Like, I instantly recalled, uh, a, a, like, a really obscure name the other day. And I was like, oh, wow, I, I'm surprised I was able to bring that up so quickly. And then here I am, ch talking about Rocco's Modern Life, and I can't remember Charlie Adler. Oh, 
I should have a blast. Ha! Huh. I'm looking at all. I've got three cans of Pringles and three different artisanal sodas I gotta do for a, uh, a snack break. Oh yeah, Char that was like one of his first, um... That was like one of his first performances in uh, My Little Pony, the eighty-eight, the eighty-six version, playing Spike the the Dragon. He was still working on uh, Broadway. I didn't know this, but also, um, let's see, Mark Hamill also works on Broadway, uh, or had done work on Broadway. John DiMaggio also did work on Broadway. He 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 originally said in a podcast for Nickelodeon that he was like he was asking one of his castmates like how do you supplement your your income when when the when the play ends and then he's just he was told, "Well, I do voice acting." Oh, I do commercials, he said. And then uh, Joe was all like, I, I don't want to do commercials. I don't want to be on camera that much. And he says, no, well, no, I do voiceover. And so that's how uh, he st got started. And then Mark Hamill, I guess he was always a theater kid, along with... Uh... Oh, uh... oh, well, just a bunch of other people. Like, it's weird how much theater people, uh, voice actors go through. Which totally makes sense, because they need to project. You can't emote from, like, you can't mumble core your way to the back of, like, the balcony. On one second, I'm gonna go check on somebody, and I need to make sure that they are okay before we continue. I just want to do that before I get started. Uh, let's see. I think the space and things supposed to be commentary, like the original characters are thrust into the modern world. Yeah. Do I watch Homestar Runner? I know of Homestar Runner, but I know I've never watched it. Actually, I've dude, I've seen clips, but it was just one of those things that never, never appealed to me. What's my favorite Mario enemy? Um, enemy, enemy. You know what? Um, there's this that weird. Um, I always remember that weird. Uh, the weird squid in Mario Sunshine. 
the one where you got to pull off its tentacles. I was uh, stomping on that thing for I don't know how long until I realized that you that's what you had to do. You had to like like rip off its own like tentacles in order to pull it. That was like there was for some reason just like really brutal to me when I first played it. Boos are cool too. Boos are cool. Like, Koopa Troopers are, like, classic and iconic and weirdly their own species once you, once you get into, like, the Paper Mario series, like, they're their own kind of creatures, but they're also, like, named after this one guy. Oh, that and Shadow Mario was, like, real creepy. I know it's Bowser Jr., but, like, when he transforms, like, that was not creepy, but ominous. I would say ominous is the, 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 the word I'm looking for. Especially when he grabs your, uh, when he grabs Flood. When you enter those, like, special zones, and then he grabs Flood and is like, bye-bye. Uh, you can't use this to jump around or fly anymore. But he's always nice enough to give him back to you after, uh, after you've completed those levels. Or maybe you just find Flood on the ground somewhere. Yeah, I did an episode on Big Bertha. I'm sorry, Koopa is a dish? I think Poopa, Koopa is a playing content. Bowser is actually, was named after a dish. A very specific food. Huh, okay, cool. Spicy, I imagine. like a stew. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. I am I am disinterested in the uh I'm not I don't hate it, but I'm not like excited, real excited about it. The uh the Super Mario Brother movie. It looks fine, but at the same time, it also, I don't know, it feels like they're trying to do the Lego movie thing, which was really nice and charming. Um, but you know what? I also had the same, uh, I also didn't, like, I wasn't super excited about Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 
and the Lego movie. And they managed to, like, turn it around. So, who knows? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the Luma, who was all like, the only escape is death. And it's like, oh, crap. Favorite sea creature? Seahorses! They're just so cool! Oh, Horsey! Oh, that was my other go-to water Pokémon. If I chose a, uh, if I chose a, a... a Bulbasaur or a Charmander, I would, uh, sometimes also wait until I could get a Horsey. Especially if I had a Bulbasaur, because a Bulbasaur can take on Misty real easy. And then you only need, like, a water Pokemon when you're fighting, um... When you're fi I would say, against, uh, the Volcano, uh, champion, Blair. Um... Yeah, a Luma. There's a Luma in the new trailer for, uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie. And he's, he's, it's like a, I think he's voiced by a kid? And, uh, they're blue and they're like, oh, I'm gonna... Uh, the, the only escape is death. They're in a prison. Hey, I got a drawing tablet now trying to learn how to draw from it. Can you give me a few pointers how to draw something because my exercise is drawing on paper. Okay, well, earlier on, here, let me, uh, let me remember where we are. I mean, well, first of all, just try and, um... Depending on what program you use and and what settings you have for your tablet, work with your settings and find a way or find the settings that you like. Because it, it really does make a difference if you just play with that, uh, Jason. Also, I would suggest... Again, whatever program you have, go with it. Uh, Clip Studio is fine. I don't know. I I would I live and breathe by uh, Paint Tool Saya, uh, version two. I think it has the best pen of uh, any any digital program I've seen. Clip Studio is a close second, but it's got way more finicky controls, um, and a bunch of features that I don't even I barely even use. So it's just like whatever. But I'd say definitely nail down those settings first, and then you'll it'll really uh, then 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 that should help. Also, um, here's just a little thing: if you're gonna do here, let's see, we are at number ten. Okay, we just started number ten. I'm gonna go all the way back into the video, the the process of what I was working on, and I'll show you a way of getting the measurements for a character. Let's see, we were at the start of 10. Yeah, okay, so this is, we need to go further back. Okay. Nope, right here. Okay. If you're gonna work with a digital medium, then take full advantage. Like, I needed to get her height. I needed to get an exact measurement of her height. So I just brought in a picture of her, of her just standing there in a, in a default pose. And I just drew over the basic shape of her her body. I'm going over her head. I'm going to go where her, her chest is. Where her skirt line falls. And then the, the rough height of her legs. And then you can just bring that into another canvas. And, and play with it. Like I'm changing the direction of her arc. From her head to her body. And that's just a good way of getting like the exact rough, the, 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 a good way of getting the rough proportions of a character. Um, there's another art style by the, um, oh, I forget, the Altonton brothers. They basically advise the same thing, like build your character out of blocks. And then you can skew that 
um, you know, uh, skew it, squish it into perspective, and then that way you have the character's perspective, uh, their their body, the shape of their body, the perspective of it, in the proper way. Uh, take advantage of the fact that you are working with, you know, a, a digital medium, and you can play with things like that. Uh, did no, I don't think they did. They may have not have seen her eyelashes. Um, her her hair was under a hat. Who knows? Oh, okay, there we go. Here's what I'm talking about. You saw for a second the comic book cover that I am. Uh, would you say you used to work on Blender? What did you work on? Oh, um, I built a bunch of character models. Just, like, really rough ones. I still work with it sometime. Trying to, uh... Trying to uh, build out... Just, like, if anything... If there's anything mechanical, like a gun, or a, a, a complicated table, or... Like, that, then I'll... I'll I may work it in, in Blender first, just to, like, get the perspective. Uh, I got base Microsoft Paint and XP drawing tablet. I think what I called I got a blender now. A learning of character design. That's good. That's good. Um, uh, Paint tool Saya, I think a license is about 50 bucks. Uh, you can, um, if you have a loose commitment to capitalism, you can find it some other places, but I would suggest that you do pay for a license. Uh, the, the programmer for Blender is just like one guy in Japan, I think. And uh, he unfortunately got really burned back when a bunch of people shared Paint Tool Seiya and said it was like a free program. That's how I originally found it. I found it on 4chan. Uh, People were posting my stuff, and I looked up there, and they were just like, Oh, yeah, here's a free art program. And then I was like, Oh, wow. And then I downloaded it, and then it wasn't. It was a it was a cracked version of Paint Tool Seiya. Uh, years later, when I actually got started to earn money, I went and, uh, you know, and bought a license proper. And also gave a little bit extra money for... Uh, for his troubles, their troubles. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure who they are, but uh, yeah, I would advise. And it's way cheaper than like. I would say you get 50 bucks with like. I think you can buy paint tool Saya for like 50 bucks when they have their sales. They which might be soon. Every like three months or four months they have a sale, like a spring sale, a winter sale. Which I think you can get for like 35 but again, I would say Paint Tool Seiya has the best pen. And, um, it doesn't have as many features. But if you can just, if you can draw, then, then you, you, you then you can figure it out. Uh, oh, can I make a suggestion? It's more of a character design. Yeah, sure, sure, Matt. Spill it.
Uh, do, 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 do. Right now, I'm sticking with Blender. And I don't have a job. Okay. Right on. Blender is a fantastic program. I don't know how it does with its... Are you using it for as a... Um, are you using the, uh, the, the, the drawing tool for Blender? Because it's also a fantastic model. Well, that's what it originally was. And then they added the, um, the freestyle drawings. Or the freestyle function. Which I, I looked into it, I kind of, I, again, I like Paint Tool Seiya. Uh, let's see now, what do I do? That's it. For her. Uh, maybe I should do, like, art cast thing like you do, but with my Blender stuff. That would be fine. No Google Paint for drawing and Blender for animation. Okay, okay, that's good, that's good. Grease pencil is what they call it. All right, you got it. Uh, you might have already chatted about this, but the MT M M MTV, MNT Mutant Mayhem. You take a look at it. Uh, it's good. I like it. I like the the, the, the style they're going through. Um, it might be a little bit too my too stylistic for my taste. They're going like a bunch like um, almost like a sketchbook, like high school sketchbook kind of style, uh, which I dig. The only issue I have is. And then this actually popped up in, um, in, uh, oh, uh, uh, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. This, this one thing where they do the, the thing where they drop the frames. I hope they have a better, I hope they have a better control of it than Puss in Boots did. Because, of course, you have it in, um, Spider-Verse and it's amazing. And it has connection to the actual story and, you know, both thematically and within the, uh, within the world. Um, and then you got Puss in Boots, which used the same sort of style, but I don't think they did it, I think they did it because they were more or less like, oh, this is popular now and it looks nice. Um, and I don't think they used it to great effect. Or as, as effective as they could. There's literally a moment where, um... Goldilocks and the three bears are like they're talking on a on the top of a hill and they're 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 moving in their regular speed and then they go into action mode their frames literally drop and they start running down the hill and I was like ooh ooh that shot um I'm not that's not Shoot, you know what? I've I've got good internet now. Let me see if I can actually bring it up. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like maybe isolate a clip. Uh, uh, the last nope 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 wrong computer wrong computer. Okay. Uh, the last wish. Uh, brawl or or three bears or whatever. Okay, no, no, we need, uh, I should do stop throwing my men at me or something like that. Um, the last wish, best of bears? I don't know, what, what, what can I do? I'll find it. Um, put some boots, the bears, the lion, da, 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 da. I'd throw my men at me. Okay, let's see. No, that's not gonna get us. Escape from the three bears. Come on, I've seen that clip a million times. Where the hell is it? Okay, uh, the last wish. Okay. Uh, Jack versus 
bears versus uh, uh, puss. Okay, Jack Horner unicorns his minions. Let's see if this is actually... Yeah, okay, okay, this is it. Here, let me... Uh... Come on. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, I'm going to show you this exact thing. I wonder if I can... Uh, I wonder if there's a way that I can just repeat this one part. Or here, I'll tell you. I'll slow it down so it doesn't it contaminate the... Um, so it doesn't contaminate the, uh, the stream. Come on, settings, loop. Speed, where's the hell's the speed? Okay, here we go. Speed. We're gonna do it at 0.5. Okay, and then let me open this up in the uh, in the chat. Boy, this is a lot complicated than I thought it would be. Um. Uh. Okay. New window browser. Okay. Paste. And I want to get rid of this so I can actually control it. No, 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 no. Stop. No. Okay, interact, interact, interact. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Um... There. There. Okay, here we go. Okay, so it's brand new. Uh, that may have, like, actually poisoned the stream. But anyway, um, I put it on five. This is fine. Okay, now watch. You're gonna see this real slow. And let me... Let me make this bigger so you can see what I'm talking about here. Like, right here, you'll see. He's pointing out to the map, and they're just working in, like, regular keyframes. Here, see, yeah, he's, look, he's at a regular key, he's at regular frames, and then boom, that's when they drop the frames, and it just, and then the frames drop here, and then he's, he's run, he's operating at regular frames, so it's just, it's jarring. It's it's really jarring the way that they I, I I want them to have better control of of the new technique. They seem to be using it in that movie just because it's like oh well it's popular. But um, it's really jarring when you cut between uh those two um those two speeds for no reason. In Spider-Verse, it worked because you literally have characters from other universes interacting with each other. And it, it serves a narrative purpose of of uh, Miles becoming Superman. Uh, Superman. Yeah, he becomes Superman. That would have been a twist. That would have been a super a weird twist, huh? And so anyway, I'm nervous that the the um um that would have been a a really weird uh I'm hoping they don't do that with um with uh the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles a lot. I'm hoping they figure out that, I was like, oh, well, the reason that it worked in that movie was because of all these reasons. And we shouldn't just, like, copy it. I mean, if there was anything that was going to copy it, it's another comic book movie. But, like... You know what I mean? 
I just I just trailed off. Like I was I was shocked about how bad that was. And luckily the final battle nothing like that ever happens, which is like really good. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It is a uh, jerk. It is a, a comic. So it should totally work in that context as well. Um, but, like, I hope that's not a thing that they that people do now. Just drop the frames because, because someone else did it. Like, the Matrix time. Like, some, sometimes things are just so good that they actually ruin it. They ruin other things. Like, The Matrix was so good, it ruined, like, movies for, like, the next five years. Okay, I'll be right back. Uh, bullet time was over and done by 2003. Um, you know what? It got people to actually... Once people actually started thinking about how time changes in, like, a movie and how you can depict that on a character-by-character -character basis, then it became... Then it was, like, really... Then it became, like, really influential. Like... Like, I'm thinking about the speed, um, like, the... the, the the mansion sequence from, uh, you know, Quicksilver, from the X-Men movies. Um, that was great. And it was also in character for... It was also good for the character. Um, who He's a speedster, and he can go through the whole mansion and, and just do all that. Um, I think when someone introduces a new idea, I think it's... Um, how can I put this? I'm, I'm th trying to think of the stages of it. First of all, it inspires other people, but they, they and then they try to figure out how to replicate it, and they just do that by copying it. Not because, not out of maliciousness, but just because of, well, how did they do it? I'm going to find my own way to tinker with it and figure out how it works. And then I, on the other hand of that equation, you have studios who are like, just do it like that. That made them money, and then it'll it'll make us money. And then you have the next stage of is where people repurpose the, all that stuff into their own sort of uh, uh, purposes. Let's see. Or into this am I working? Okay, here we go. Hold on, I'm trying to work something out. Okay. Cool. That's one, two, three, four.
That was only an hour? Okay. And uh, what you're going to see here soon, after I'm done coloring everything on the image, I'm going to start coloring some lines to sort of, uh, I don't know, DF, D, I can't say it. Uh, basically point out like where different levels of the, the image are. Like uh, Robbie, or not Robbie, um, Ralph is going to be have a kind of a, a dimmer color outline on his on his uh on the background rachel is going to be clear black and then i'm going to try and uh, both um color uh rocco a little bit more with a soft shading and that'll make make it feel like there's three different levels of existence going on here like rachel popping out of an old illustration of herself and then Rocco being the third part in 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 a third stage of like reality uh hey Yazal. let's see i man i love the way you drew her thanks um <coughs> let's see now well, what do I gotta do? What do I gotta do? In one hour? Output. Do er. Uh, what headcanon was that? SMG4 is being cryptic now? I don't know what that... I don't know what that is. See what can I do here? With this. Yeah, that works fine. Okay. While Rocco is in space, Ralph created the world's biggest life still. But he heard Wacky Daily was popular again, so he got a. Eh! 
No. No, I think the life still happened... Uh, the life still happened, like, maybe a few years after. They are watching me? Who? What? Ruined drones. Now we can... Yeah, you can buy one at Best Buy. Uh, have I seen Kubo, the Age of Wonder Beast? Um, I've seen, like, the first couple episodes, and I know that the series is actually over, but I don't... I haven't gotten into the whole thing. I should go and check it out, though. Like, for realsies. It's like a post-apocalypse show, or movie. Or, yeah, show, it's show, it's a show. I don't know why I said movie. Let's see now. Kupo is good. Uh, I was in an event about models, and there was one on... Ooh. Big same. I don't know why Kupo didn't grab me. Hmm. As much as I love Static Kling, I have an internal struggle as to whether or not it's a legit Nickelodeon canon, since instead of airing on Nick, it was on Netflix original film. Yeah, I know. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, Victor. Um, yeah, I saw your comments. They were fine. Um, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Like, what other shows did they do that with? They did that, they did a revival for, uh, Hey Arnold. Did they do anything for any other shows? Oh, 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 shit, what am I thinking of? Uh, Invader Zim. That was, like, the big one. I love that one. Yeah, cat leprechaun. Why did it stall? Hold on. And go. There we go. One more. Come on, ten seconds. Get to moving. That was a short one. Yeah, here we go. Now this is where I start. I'm I'm actually shading him a bit. Again, sort of uh to DM for DM how can I say that word? Uh now, when I try to say it, then I lose the word in my brain. Basically, just, just like... You know, make it clear that there's three different levels of reality being at the displayed. Differentiate. There. Yeah, the Hey Arnold Jungle movie did air on Nickelodeon, but like... Oh, you don't like Zima? That's fine. That's fine. Each their own. Ah, uh, let's see. What am I going to work with here? I don't know. I can basically delete all this crap. I'm looking on my computer now. 
just l rummaging through stuff. Why don't I have anything? Your frisky dingo screenshots. Oh yeah, that's from the frisky dingo thing. What I was doing. Ah, well, I'll worry about. I was trying. To, I'm trying to think of another thing to draw, but I'm also need some references. Screw it. I'll just. I'll just do something later. It's about 15 minutes, so I'm just gonna. Ooh. Have I seen the second season of Gary and His Demons? Yes, I did, because someone on on Twitter posted a picture of the redesign of Lindsay. And I was like, what? It wasn't an especially flattering picture of her. Um, like, it, it was from a weird angle, and they it, and it was like... And her eyes are now this, like... What do you call that? A hexagon? They're hexagon shapes? I was like, ugh. Um, huh. But I saw it, and they kept most of the models, uh, most of the models were on brand. Um, I'm about, like, halfway through. It's getting interesting with, like, the, what's happening with Gary and the kid, and, um, and, like, well, and I'm not, I don't even know what, I'm, there's, like, two kids. Well, actually, there's a baby. Um, Yeah, I don't even know. And also, like, well, she's the one that got the biggest redesign. Like, no one else did. Uh, by the way, it was a good opener. It was a good opener with, like, oh, I've, I've got your crystal right here. And he's like, oh, that, that, that that's the crystal? He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just you, b b bring your demons out and we'll we'll have a big fight. Um, What was I going to say? Oh, uh... Oh, what, oh, oh, they seem to be also doing something weird with, like, like, the headquarters is entirely different now. It's like, it's like they revamped the setting, too. To make it so that demons are, like, way more complicated. Or, like, not complicated, but the, the relationship between demons and humans are, like, way more complicated than they were in the, uh, in the original, in the, the first season. Hey, baby. We just woke up. We need to stretch. Oh, no. Yeah, that was funny. Where, where, am I, where am I in the actual drawing? I've, I've lowered it so I could look at you guys. Uh, okay, yeah, we are... I guess I'm just adding these little loops. Oh, it's great. It's, it's good, but it's like, it has way more of a, um sort of a social mess social message than the first season did with like demons be actually being part of the populace and uh like wondering if they're like been discriminated against and all that stuff oh that and i i caught the first episode of moon girl moon girl and devil dinosaur 
Uh, really good. Really good stuff. Um, it kind of reminds me of a blend between um, Rise of TMT and uh, Gende Tartakovsky's stuff. Like, Rise always had like a like a a little bit of that Gende Tartakovsky kind of movement. Um, but this, but Moon Girl definitely has more of a, uh, like, from a design standpoint, they're very similar. Especially Moon Girl. Sometimes they do, they do, uh, they have shots of, uh, Devil Dinosaur, and that always reminds me of, uh, Rise of TMNT, because of the way they animate him. But Moon Girl moves in these sort of, like, quick mo quick movements and her design is like her glasses are kind of like flat and they have little emotes um so it's like it, it, it definitely gives me like tende tartakovsky vibes I've actually, you know, it's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur was always like one, one of those things that was always in the back of my head. I always knew about them, but I didn't know how, like, good a team they would be making. Kind of reminds me of, like, DC's version of, or like Marvel's version of DC's uh, Booster Gold and uh, Blue Beetle. Where it's just like, oh, hey, these are two characters that are kind of popular on their own i mean they're they've got a you know they they're they're okay like they're popular enough let's stick them together and see what happens Oh, uh, fun fact, by the way, the colorist for the original comic was a trans woman. Cool! Uh, Moon Girl wasn't a pre-existing character. She was made for the original run. The original one of, run of what? The comics? No, I'm not thinking about... I'm not... Uh, no, Moon... I'm talking about, like, maybe about, like, ten years ago. Like, when they... When Moon Girl debuted. Here, how old is Moon Girl? Maybe I'm confused. I don't think they... I don't think they made her for just this show. Here, hold on. Are we almost done? Yeah, we got maybe about, like, ten minutes left. Okay, let's see. Uh, Moon Girl. Uh, first appearance, Moon Girl 2015. Okay. Okay, that's actually newer than I thought. But she is a pre-existing character before the TV series. Luna... Lun... Lunella Lafayette. Okay, and so she teamed up with Devil Dinosaur. Who Devil Dinosaur has existed since, like, the 60s. And then Moon Boy was his... his weird monkey sidekick. I knew that, because I did know about Devil Dinosaur. She's less than 10 years old. Okay, that's fine. And Devil Dinosaur just looks like a like a dinosaur originally.
Okay, so when they wanted to revamp, basically they wanted to revamp Devil Dinosaur and was trying to figure out who to add with him as a partner. And so they came up with Moon Girl. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Uh, okay, I think we are actually done with the, uh, with the drawing. And there it is. Again, I was really happy with the way this turned out. It's, like, simple, but really effective with the way it's... With the way it just kind of pops. And again, those, like, the 90s with the blue and the oranges and... Um, yeah. Yeah, I, again, I'm just really happy with that. And then I'm going to go through and uh, figure out how, uh, when to uh, create that. I'm going to edit the, the episode and figure that out. Is it just me or does her arm look greener? Hold on. Let's see. I've got my, I've got my picture set up. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's just a trick of the light. It's fine. It's just, it's the, it's the purple next to the green. It's, it's messing with me. Okay. I uh, see I asked you something above in chat. Okay, hold on. What'd you say? What was it, Drake? Let's see. I'm sorry, I missed it. Kupo is good. That's the last thing you said. Uh, what did you say? If it's if if the size of the image is in like a wallpaper size, then that's going to be a familiar faces. I learned that the hard way. To make it actually shaped like the freaking um Okay, Drake. Okay, Drake, you said... What'd you say? Anyway, yeah, I think this uh, this turned out way better than I thought it would be. And, uh, I will... Did I? Yeah, I already did the speed draws. Okay, that's great. Then I can delete this footage. What'd you say, Dre? Oh, okay. I asked you something. Well, I'm gonna look through the chat again. Can I search for something? Koopo is good! Uh... -uh. Maybe I should do stuff like an art cast thing, but with your Blender stuff. It will be on my Discord. Oh, you were asking about who's my favorite cartoon mom? Um... Gosh, I don't know. Um... I was gonna say Marge, but then I haven't thought about Marge in forever. Um... Ah... I don't know, I gotta think about that. I did a top 10 list. But it, that, that was kind of a wash. Um, oop, don't, don't do that. Okay, no, I'm talking about something else. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna go and uh, clean up and get some stuff done. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, we'll have to do more of it later. Uh, I'll be working on some more drawings and, and in between editing and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, yeah, I hope you have a good one. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and uh, we'll see you later, okay? Bye-bye.